Alright guys, so welcome back to Gaming Today. Today we're going to be talking about a pretty fun game and a very cool one at that. This game is called Octodad Deadliest Catch. Or Deadliest Catch, I think I might have said Deadliest. I don't even know. This game is pretty old now, but it's actually a very fun game at that. A very cool game. I think during this time with the pandemic going on and a lot of things being locked down and a lot of kids out of school as well, and if you're even an adult watching this, this is a game for you. In Octodad, basically you're an octopus pretending to be a person and basically who's a father. They never explain where the kids come from trust me I've played the entire game that's why I'm in this video it's actually not very long of a game but that's okay though but what th is there is very fun I mean I know the content wise it's short it's like a two and a half hour maybe three hour game but that's not very long and it depends on how good you are at the controls yes guys we need to talk about something this game has some of the most unique and interesting controls in a video game ever made this is one of those games where you need to take a little bit of time to get used to it and honestly you'll spend probably the entire game getting used to the controls so if you plan to play this game again you'll probably be a pro but the first time you go through it every time you go to a new section there's always something new to learn and maybe you'll be better at it than I was but the controls are definitely challenging so this isn't like most games you don't just you know press a single button to move something but before we talk about the controls in detail let's talk about which systems this game is actually available for it's on the PlayStation 4 the Xbox one the Nintendo switch Android iOS Microsoft window with the Steam platform I believe Wii U Linux and Mac OS guys this is on almost every platform so if you don't own this game or don't plan to buy it wow you were really out of your mind there's every system you can want right there I have no idea how this game could probably perform on the mobile I never seen it but supposedly it had been released at one time or another on mobile so if it is go check it out yourself but let's talk about those controls real quick well I'm gonna be talking about my experience with the PlayStation 4 and basically that's what a lot of people are gonna be looking at because this game is about four or five dollars right now so it's dirt cheap and if you're watching this video after the sale is over there's always sales during the year usually about three to four that basically this game goes on sale so just wait for that or pick it up for fifteen dollars or whatever it goes for it's definitely worth the money but it is a very short game anyways back to them controls so you use the L2 and R2 on the PlayStation 4 basically to move his arms or his legs which are the same thing because guess what he's an octopus not a person so that makes kind of sense I guess and you also have to manipulate the left joystick and the right joystick on top of that there's also one interaction button which I don't remember offhand which button I used but it was either triangle X button on the controller I could be wrong now if you're playing this on Steam or God forbid iOS and all that I can't begin to tell you how you'd control it it probably is more confusing there if anything but you'd always use P uh, PS4 controller support and all that on the Windows platform so if you want to just mimic that you could always do that if you have a PS4 but you want to play it on your PC that's a way to go but again it's cheaper by far on the PlayStation 4 right now anyways guys moving forward on that this game is insanely cool I'm just gonna tell you why the controls make the game for itself now this game has been notoriously reported as the worst controlling game on the PlayStation 4 and basically in general one of the worst controlling games of all time or most difficult for sure but there's a lot of websites that say the worst and I can understand that because the entire game is based around the idea of you being an octopus pretending to be a person so the controls are built on being wonky because that would be extremely wonky could you imagine an octopus being a real person well after actor dad you can probably see it would never happen obviously this world is very weird and of course they don't see that he's an octopus or at least most people don't we should say until we get to the aquarium with a biologist or whatever you want to call them. not biologist I don't know the aquarium people those people kind of know who you are they see you and they start coughing until they figure out that you are damn right an octopus but besides the aquarium people basically no one else recognizes that you're an octopus so the wife or basically the bride-to-be at this point in the very beginning of the game but his wife does not uh, even know he's an octopus so she basically marries an octopus without even knowing it and for this two kids how that happens we have no idea and at the very end of the game it's teased that even the kids don't know how it's possible while well, they ask the question no one understands how that's possible and we will never get an explanation because that would be very strange but apparently either they're adopted or I don't even know you use your imagination that's kind of weird isn't it anyways besides that so you know you basically start off in the very beginning of the game as you know trying to get married and you're going to the reception or whatever you want to call it the um, you know getting married and all that the, you know you see the reception party tables and all that and you'd be busting things up because you're an octopus just learning the controls of the game and you're basically learning how to walk as a human for the very first time or pretty much the very first time and you got to get to the actual wedding part you know where you get married and say I do and do the kiss the bride thing well he's trying to get there and basically once you do you get married and then the game fast forwards to 10 years later so 10 years later now you got two children and you basically got to be a dad the first thing you do is wake up in the morning and you gotta start your day first thing you're gonna wake up to is like what most people do an alarm clock and yes it 
it pisses you off, even in the game. Alarm clocks are not our friends. No one likes alarm clocks. If you like alarm clocks, you're crazy. Anyways, so go then, throw that damn alarm clock and turn it off, get it out of the way, and then start your day. And it's at this point that we meet the two children and his wife, you know, ten years later, which we didn't see the children until now. So this is kind of weird because now this octopus has been around for ten years pretending to be as a human. How is it possible? Well, later on in the game we get a little tids and tads that he basically isn't around the house very much. He isn't home a lot. We don't know where he goes, and the game never really explains that. And I'm going to just disappoint with that, but you know, it's never explained. So you use your imagination. So in the beginning of the game, basically what you're doing is daily chores around the house. You're taking care of the children and basically feeding them. Going going outside and doing some stuff in the lawn and basically chopping some firewood which we never actually use the firewood so why do we do that? I don't even know. I don't even see a fireplace, maybe I missed it, I have no idea. But anyways, you gotta chop some firewood, gotta do some basic chores, save a birdhouse or whatever, I don't even know. So many little bull things but it's fun. I know it sounds like chores because everything in this game is technically a chore but that's what being a dad is, there's a lot of chores, you gotta do a lot of things you may not want to do. Some boring stuff, some fun stuff, you name it. But again, this is the point. Octo dad, dadliest catch, you get the idea. The game is really, you know, based around the idea of you being an octopus dad, which we've already explained uh, is kind of strange in itself, but that's the fun of it. And again, going through and doing all these basic chores that a human can do would be very easy if you were human, but he's an octopus, and that's where the game really gets its fun humor from. So all these things, while sound basic and boring, they're actually pretty darn fun when you're doing it, but some of these things have been <laughs> kind of not so fun. So anything in the beginning was really fun around the house and all that doing the basic stuff it's addicting and it is kind of fun but it is in this time that we finally meet the protagonist or the bad guy of the story basically and that's the chef and the chef is really pissed off that you're basically an octopus and knows that you're an octopus he's not fooled by your disguise but why does he know that well we'll talk about that later because that's explained towards the later end of the game but yeah essentially you've got to basically distract him or basically get him out of the hair of your you know family because the family's like hey what's going on over there and why are you doing your chores I don't know where this guy just burst through a fence and you know he's trying to get at you, trying to kill you with some machine. What are you gonna do? So you gotta basically keep him off your hook, and that's the idea. No pun intended, keep you off the hook. But anyways, guys, moving forward past that, he basically makes the excuse to go to the store. For some reason, the kids say they need cereal or something. I don't even know what happens. But basically, the next thing is after you go from the house, you go to the store, and basically the kids want certain items, and the house needs certain foods. You gotta get a pizza. Well, that sounds super simple. But the freezer are all super frozen so you can't just open the door and grab it you need to go and climb through the freezer system which took me forever to figure out and you got to climb through it like a maze and actually get the dang freaking pizza it's crazy and that took a long time till I figured it out but it was very interesting to learn the mechanics and the controls and see that we can control basically Octodad in a very different way than I imagined you know I didn't think it was even possible to go through but there but it looked like the game was telling me to but I couldn't figure it out and then basically guys you got to get some like own soda some cereal for the kids and stuff, then you gotta pick a golden apple, which is probably the easiest part of this entire store sh uh, charade, if you will, and then basically you get tricked into getting some free sushi or some sort of like fish product. You go to the very back and I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird, what store in real life would do that? And I guess Octodad has been tricked. Guess who's back? It's the chef. Yes, he's back in action again and he's ready to try to chomp you up, which leads us on to this next part, which is a chase scene. Yeah, this kind of, kind of blows, honestly, but it was kind of funny at the same time. Basically, Octodad is chasing by the chef and you have to keep running through and basically avoiding all these obstacles and stuff and then eventually you get break you basically ba break out of there and you get to the main section of the store and then chef is basically locked behind the door which is yeah thank god he's out of there but now you're all in a hurry and Octodad's stressed out like let's get to the dang cash register and let's get checked out which is fun because you actually have to check out yourself that means you have to scan the items you don't have to bag it you don't have to pay for it the game does all that for you but it's kind of funny that the game makes you do everything almost including you know, scanning the items. Like, you're gonna buy it, you gotta scan it, right? You guys know how that works at the supermarket. Well, anyways, that's kind of fun. From there on, they basically say they want to go and they don't go home with the food. Instead, they go to the aquarium. This is the third and final chapter of the game. I know, really short game, I told you. It's very short. Now, there are some extras after you beat the aquarium, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But basically, that's the last chapter of the official storyline of the game, and that's it. That's all they wrote. But while this is such a short game, it's one of those amazing games for just weird reasons. It's very hard to explain, it's very zany and all over the place, but that is what makes this game so special. So the kids in the family go to the aquarium, and of course Octodad must go with. Octodad is afraid because he's a, you know, octopus, and of course these marine biologists and all these 
these people who study the fish and all that, they're gonna know he's a dang octopus. He's, you know, obviously an octopus. Come on now, he's wearing clothes, but that doesn't change the fact he's an octopus. So he's petrified and worried to death because they know and he knows. So obviously he's worried, but he's still gonna try his best to get through it. So the first thing you gotta do is get the ticket booth. You gotta basically do what anyone else would do, get a ticket. Now you could choose to wait in line, which I believe does work, but I basically cut to the front of the line. Now guys, we haven't mentioned this before because it really isn't a big deal in the beginning of the game. There is this meter at the bottom of the screen and that basically tells you if everyone knows basically you're a human or thinks you're an octopus. Yeah, I know that sounds weird, but if the meter gets too high, you basically die or lose and have to re-go back to the checkpoint. And the checkpoints in this game are very reasonable and very fair. Don't worry about that, but it is something that you're going to notice a lot in the last chapter of this game because it really does come into effect quite a bit and it's really easy to get that meter all the way up. Now, you could have lost at any point in this game up to this point, but you probably wouldn't have. That's why I didn't mention it. But anyways, guys, so try to act on your best behavior in the aquarium because now you're in public in a place with a lot of people and a lot of things going on. And again, you've got to avoid these marine biologists every time you see them because if you see them and they see you, they're going to know you're an octopus and they start doing this coughing thing as I told you about. And basically, that is no good. That makes that meter go up very, very fast. And it's almost like they're shooting at you in a sense, but they're not. But this is part of the game where if you start breaking too many things and knocking into people too much or breaking too many things when the game doesn't want you to you basically get noticed and then you become you know an octopus and everyone knows you're an octopus okay that's the idea but basically you just have to go through with the family and go to the different exhibits sounds easy sounds fun although I'm going to talk about this I've been to many aquariums all across the dang country and all over the place okay now here's my problem I've never seen an aquarium anything like this aquarium this aquarium is very different I say that because the exhibits are very different now these aquarium exhibits are all strange okay they're more like a playground in an arcade than they are an actual aquarium I'm not joking about this they are actual arcade games and I played every single one of them in there and got every single prize which becomes kind of funny because the arcade games themselves are very difficult to control now this is something strange you're basically playing arcade games with your wife well your wife is standing there and basically you need to be Octodad and play the different games and get her prizes and I find that kind of funny because I don't know why the kids aren't playing the arcade games but you're playing it to get your sweetheart some gifts. Okay, makes sense, I guess, but why isn't she playing them with you? I don't get it. Anyway, not the point. Point is, you get all these different games to play, and they're very, very difficult games to play, for the most part. Now, you could just play any one of these games seven times, or whatever it is, to get all the different gifts that you need to get. You can just get the same gift over and over again, and keep giving it to it to complete the mission. So you don't have to play all of these, you can just play the easiest one, and go with that. But I did every one of these, because I wanted to see what was fun, and what wasn't. And a lot of them were not very fun. Pretty much none of them were fun. It's not made for that, but that's the fun of it in itself, that it's so hard to play as an octopus any of these arcade games. It was funny, it was a good time kill, but yeah, weird. Okay, so once you get all these gifts and stuff, basically the aquarium starts breaking, and all these gifts that you just gave her, she don't want them no more. She's like, hey, the, the little tank is like cracking, so why don't you fill up the cracks with basically these toys that you worked your butt off to get? I got like totally fisted. I'm like, really? Could you imagine that? Your tank is breaking and she expects you, just some customer, to basically fix it. You didn't break the tank, why should you have to fix it? Well, you know what, I guess you do. So you fix the tank and you use all these different toys to do it. So darn annoying, another one of those ideas of the game being kind of a chore. But this does become one of the most annoying parts in Octodad. This game gets really boring in the aquarium, I'm not going to lie about that. Some of you guys might enjoy this, but honestly everything becomes like a chore. So once you guys are actually done in the arcade section and you fix the tank and everything is basically hunky-dory, you end up having to go find Stacy. And Stacy is the little girl, and the little girl's basically in this dark exhibit and it's basically dark sea hell if you ask me basically it's a room that's completely dark and you have to use basically lights to light things on sounds simple sounds easy but it is pitch black dark and it's not fun at all honestly this part is grueling and brutal then to make matters worse they give you this shake light thing and if you guys have ever used a shake light the idea is you've got to shake it to produce light but it only lights up for a very short period of time so you got to keep shaking it and it's quite annoying in real life this would still be annoying but definitely in the form of a game with pitch black darkness 
darkness. This is not fun at all. And to make matters worse, you're gonna lead Stacy, the little girl, through the whole like plaza. It's like a little maze. And this part is not fun at all because you've got her screaming the entire time, and it's super goddamn annoying. I actually had to mute the television at this point. I recommend it heavily. Her screaming is so damn annoying, I couldn't deal with it. And honestly, I got trapped in here a few times because basically her AI follows you. So basically, Stacy follows you the entire time. The little girl, of course, she follows you, and you get stuck into walls, and you can't move because the character, the AI, just basically moves on top of you. And then you have to reset the game or go to the last checkpoint. And that really breaks the immersion of the game for me, especially. You're supposed to be Octodad, an octopus father. You're not really thinking you're playing a game, well, kinda. But you know, this part really breaks the immersion a lot, and I hate that. But if you do make it through the maze with it, this is part with the marine biologist, which I didn't actually pay attention. I was supposed to give Stacy the shake light. This is the idea to distract the biologist because she'll, you know, basically distract him. He'll look at her. So I messed up on that the first couple times, probably about five times, to be honest with you. But anyways, if you do give the light, she basically keeps making noise and then goes and distracts him. The next section basically is interesting too. You got to plug in all these different lights. It's pitch black dark. There's a bunch of neon things on the ground. It really didn't seem pointful. It was very confusing. And then it's time to go, but the escalators aren't working, so you need to fix them for her to follow you. Once you're done with that exhibit, basically you have to go for the little boy now. I don't know why all of these people are separated. You should think the mother would be with the kids and you would probably be following them along like anybody else should do. You don't split up like that. What is this Scooby-Doo or something? Split up gang. But once you do find the little boy, you have to go through this like maze and it's really like basically like a playground within an aquarium, which is quite weird. I've never seen that in my life ever. If you, I don't think so. But basically you go into this room and there's a bunch of different activities you need to do. Basically a gigantic hamster wheel that you need to power by running on it. Which would sound simple kind of, right? But not really, you're a dang octopus, how many times got to say it? Anyway, so yeah, you end up bringing yourself around and I actually went flying off the thing. I was like, okay, really all this for him? Come on now, he's just a little boy, he should be impressed by the fact that you're there. I don't know. But anyways, going forward, so then there's like this little puzzle game and all it is is like reveal the message. You just got to tilt it around or whatever, you got to knock it around, you got to run on top of it or something. That's easy, simple, okay, no problem there, I can deal with that. But then, you got this stupid game with these balls and they're like some sort of crustacean or something, I don't know, there's some sponge, I don't know what they are, okay? I don't really care. Some sort of balls, they're blue and green. You need to put two of these, I think, urchins or something, I don't know, I'm t totally focused on that. You gotta put two of these dang things in each one of these holes. They look like little Mario tubes or something. You gotta put two in each hole, a pair, a green one and a blue one. But you know what, there's three of them and you gotta do it over and over again. Again. Well, I accidentally knocked him in the wrong order, which is fine, but then it makes it so much harder to get him into the other one, and I didn't do that on purpose. But yes, it was such a dang challenge. I finally got it done. I was so annoyed with it. It was just one of those games that was really darn annoying. I have to admit, it really was a struggle to actually get through that. I know it seems simple. You need to wait till the balls get in on top of the, uh, basically the platform, you know, producing the air to push them up, and then you got to move it like with the joystick. But you got to be, you know, kind of slow about it. it. Can't be too fast, too slow. It's got to be just the right velocity to get those into the right tubes. And that is dang annoying. It sounds really stupid and boring. It doesn't really sound like something you should be doing in this game. But it was, and we did. Okay, moving forward past that. Now here comes the other fun part, okay? So you got to learn how to manipulate, basically, Octodad's controls even more. you got to climb a playground. And I'm not joking, it is an actual playground this time. You have to climb it, and as you climb it, you're breaking everything along, so it makes it even harder to go up it. Now here's the good part, guys. There's a little checkpoint systems even though the game doesn't tell you if you do fall off after getting to a certain height basically the midpoint of the level there's uh, opening on the side there there's like these little vent holes and if you didn't notice if you made it to the top and basically fell off you could fall off and go by that vent that was previously not turned on and now it is turned on so you could fly up to the top and basically hopefully get yourself on top where the kid is because he wants you to go and basically race with them and like you know meet you to the top kind of thing but once you've got all that done basically those are the main things at the aquarium you will do but, there is this next section here, you basically go to meet your wife and you think you see your wife at the top of the tank, so you go up there, but it turns out that it's not really your wife at all. It's a decoy, it's basically a scarecrow, if you will. It's a distraction. The chef is repairing and he's ready to take action. He's gonna put 
put you back in the place you belong. Which is with your sea brethren in basically the ocean. Well, he doesn't have the ocean to his disposal, so he puts you in the dang aquarium. And he knows you all too well. And this is when we finally start to figure out what basically the chef's problem is. Why is he so mad at Octodad for being an octopus? And how does he know? Okay, we know how he knows. It's common sense, but not and everybody else doesn't seem to know it. But it is so obvious. He's a dang octopus. Come on now. But anyways, so we get a little backstory of basically how him and his wife met. And this is kind of interesting. We get this whole section of him basically flopping onto a boat. And then basically they go through all this little process of him trying to sneak along this boat and basically get some clothes from the captain and becoming the new captain of the ship. So everyone thinks he's Mr. Captain now. Yeah, Octodad's really going places. But that's not the dang point. He basically ends up meeting his wife and then he also meets Chef. And they get into this bit of a quarrel. The Chef wants to basically take out, you know, the stowaway, but also wants to take out, you know, the octopus. Because he's like, hey, you're not the captain. He originally gets tricked a little bit. And then he's like, wait a minute, you're not the captain. You're a dying octopus and I'm going to feed you out. But no, that didn't end up happening. So eventually Octodad knocks him off the boat, which really peeved him off. Now he's in the middle of the ocean by himself floating around. So of course that made him upset and that is why he hates Octodad. So that kind of is a little backstory right there and that's how they fell in love. They fell in love on the boat. Kind of romantic yet weird. She was a stowaway, not explained why. And again, he's an octopus. Uh, not explained why. My guess is he just got brushed off onto the boat. I don't think he's no secret agent trying to get on the boat and become a human. I don't think so. It's not explained, but I'm pretty sure that's not the deal. Anyways, guys, moving forward past that, it's kind of a boring section of the game. It's actually handled in the form of a flashback. Once he's been thrown into the tank, he just basically goes into this flashback state and remembers what happened. Now after that, you're being chased by a shark. You start to swim. It's kind of weird and awkward. You just start you know, pumping your legs and eventually the shark pops along behind you. And then you're this big chasing between you and the shark. You go through the ventilation system and all that after basically avoiding him between all these rocks and stuff. You go through the ventilation system and he's still chasing you. You go into this whole other section, basically a whole other tank, and you know, you're still being chased. You think you're calm and out of nowhere the shark appears again. But then it appears that I guess some, I don't even know, um, some sort of ocean animal, I don't know, seals or something, or dolphins, one of them start to attack the shark and then we don't see nothing and the shark is gone. For good, we don't see him anymore. So I don't know what happens, but basically that is the game. And then eventually you come out another vent, you figure out a way out and you come out a vent right by the gift shop. And once you're out the vent and you're in this little room right next to the gift shop, you basically have to find your way out the door and then you go into the gift shop and you need to find a key so that you can unlock the door because everything's locked up. You're after hours. The aquarium is now closed and your family's nowhere to be seen. Why would they be? Well, that's something we're going to talk about. They're actually in the aquarium still, but they're not there. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But anyways, so you've got to unlock the door and finding the key was a bit of a trick. Once I did find the dang key, you need to reach your hand through the hole basically and actually unlock it on the other side. Because it works out good that he's basically an octopus, right? Because if you were human, you probably couldn't even reach that. So it works out good. Anyways, after that, you got to basically go to the cafeteria. How well do dad knows they'll be in the cafeteria? I have no idea. But the idea is to find his family and get out of there as fast as possible, away from that big old chef. Anyways, so we gotta go through, we find out that basically there's a whole bunch of marine biologists and they're doing their work, the late night crew if you will. And those pesky marine biologists are right by the cafeteria, so you need to basically break a whole bunch of stuff to distract them, to make them come down to find out what's going on. So that's exactly what you do, you break a bunch of things and it's like a crazy routine until eventually the guy goes away or the marine biologist goes away from the cafeteria door where you can actually enter through where the trays are supposed to go. Once inside, Octodad finds out his family's being held captive by the crazy chef and everything's on fire. How did the fire start? I have no clue. But basically we need to stop this fire and you need to find a passageway to get to your family. It's at this point there's another chase scene between Octodad and the chef. You're running across the tables as fast as you can trying to get to your family. It's a crazy debacle right there. And again, then there's this climbing on the whole like rafters and stuff and wood is falling down you need to find your way to Stacy and the kids and all that stuff. It's just really, really crazy. Honestly, it was a very challenging section. This is the ending fight of the game. There's one more section though. Once you do get all that done and the kids help out and the daughter does some weird jumpy run thing, you gotta see it. It's weird. And then the chef and the family are all in this big center where there's a fountain and all that. There's like these little fish and fountain thingy and he's throwing frying pans at you. He's like, flying pans? Like, come on, dude. What are you doing? I know you're a chef, so it kind of makes sense. But basically, you gotta plug up these holes and once you plug up all four holes, it basically the fountain goes and explodes 
and then the water basically makes this thing fall on top of him, some sort of decoration, which I don't know why he couldn't break out of that, but okay. Anyways, Octodan gives him a hug and says, with the love of all mankind, obviously the chef thought he was going to basically kill him or something, I don't know what the chef thought he was going to do, but basically Octodan shows him peace, and yeah, everyone makes a good old laugh, and then the discussion again comes up of the idea, well, if dad's an octopus, where did I come from? And it's never explained, and that is basically the main story of Octodad. But the game doesn't end there, we're then treated with the movie theatre credit roll, and it's kind of interesting, you got all the main characters of the game all in this like movie theatre, you see the chef, everyone's all there, he leaves early, I don't know why, but anyways, yeah, it's kind of cute, I thought it was funny, yeah, nothing to, you know, write home about of course, but it was just a nice little touch that was all like in a movie theatre kind of thing, I thought it was quite funny. Anyways guys, yeah, that's Octodad for you right there in a nutshell, now that's not all this game actually has, there's actually two extra levels, but they're like prequel levels, before the game actually takes place. So this is what happens before all this takes place, in the aquarium and the chef and all that. It's kind of when they're dating and going out and doing things. It's just two levels, I don't want to ruin that for you too much. I'll show you a little bit, but I don't want to ruin it for you. I don't know, personally me, I didn't really want to play the rest of it. I thought I got my fill of Octodad with the main game itself. Now, if you do want to go back and replay the game of Octodad, there's a whole bunch of ties scattered around all these levels. I think there's like a hundred of them or something, and you can actually collect all of those. I collected a few on my journey, maybe three or four, I don't even know. But they're very hard to find, clearly, because I only found four with them in my main journey. So you guys might want to do that if you're a completionist and you want some sort of trophy. I'm sure there's a trophy for it, I don't know. But I'd, either way, let's talk about the real aspect of this game. Was it fun? Honestly, yes, it was fun. Is it something I would recommend? Of course I would. But it's a very challenging and very annoying game at the same time. It's very relaxing, yet very stressful. The stress comes from the controls and the lack of them. Basically, the controls are wonky, very, very wonky, to be honest. And it, like I said, it's been notoriously known to be one of the wonkiest controlling games of all time. Probably the hardest controlling game of all time, one of them, for sure. But anyways, guys, yeah, it is definitely something you got to get your mind around. And once you do, Octodown can be a great game. It really is. It's fun. It's something you can tell your friends you've played and you've beat. And that's another reason why I say you should play this. This is an experience game, guys. This is one of those games you get a unique experience from you couldn't get from any other game. And with Octodown always being on sale in a very cheap and affordable game at about $15 retail price. And again, on iOS it's only $4.99 and Android same thing, $4.99. I heavily recommend playing it with physical controls. But is Octodad worth playing? Of course it is. It's an amazing game. With the wacky zany humour, it's totally worth getting into. Now guys, I totally put a lot of spoilers in this video. I actually told you a lot more about the game than you might think I should have. And I don't blame you for that. But guys, the story of this game is not the real fun part. The story is cute and humorous, but the story is basically something you could tell on a napkin. It's very small, very short and sweet. You can summarize the entire story of Octodad from start to finish on a dang napkin, no problem at all. Now, a lot of games can be summarized like that, but this game in particular has one of the weakest, most poor stories ever made. Honestly, it's very basic. It's funny though, and that's the whole point of it. It's just a funny game. And you can't really get everything that's funny about this game by just watching my video. And that's why I say to buy it. It is a really good game. With it being on sale right now on the PlayStation, if you're watching this video while it's new, it up. This is the perfect time to get it. I'm telling you, if you don't get it now, get it when it's on sale next time. But this game is something that must be in your collection. It's totally funny. And again, guys, it had a physical release as well, and if you're lucky to have a physical copy of this, and if you're one of them collectors who needs everything on physical disc, well, yeah, this is one you might want to pick up, of course, just because it looks so hilarious in the collection. Octodad, Dadliest Catch, come on now. We need a sequel of something. We need something else from these developers, something like this, maybe not an octopus, something maybe with a little bit of controls, hopefully, but something like this again. This would be totally cool. How you could make a sequel of this game, I don't think it's possible, honestly. There's probably no way to uh, make any kind of a sequel, to be honest, but it's overall a great experience. You know, with only three chapters of the game, it's very, very short and sweet. So if you have about two hours to beat this game, you can. I think my playthrough could have been about an hour, maybe an hour and 30 minutes, if I had known what I was doing the entire time. And you're not worried about those collectibles. If you're not worried about all these stupid ties and all the collectible things, yeah, yeah, then this is a game that you could probably beat in about an hour and 30 minutes. And again, it's a great experience. Honestly, it really is. Maybe you can beat it in like 30 minutes. I don't know, 40 minutes. Try yourself. I don't know. If you're that good at Octodance controls, you probably could knock the time down. Anyways, guys, yes, I'm going to tell you guys this is a great game to play. 
must try it. It's definitely worth your time. Anyways, guys, hopefully you did enjoy the video, and if you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section down below, do you like these long featured videos? And if you do, please let me know in the comment section down below. And until next time, guys, it's been Gamer Today. Tell me what you guys think of Octo down in the comment section. I'm curious. Alright, guys, till next time. Who's that man with